Oh, Secret of Evermore. Now this is a great freaking game. I'm pretty sure the 1995 action RPG was the only title made by Squaresoft's American developers, and when you see the quality of this game, you really need to ask why. As a late Super Nintendo release, the game didn't see much attention, and still doesn't to this day, despite its excellent gameplay and aesthetics. So why isn't this game getting its own episode? Well, it was already done on 16-bit gems, so I don't really feel like I can add too much that hasn't already been said, so I won't waste my time. I left a link in the description below to that review, because I know you guys are just too lazy to look it up yourself. Anyway, believe it or not, that review was not the first thing that attracted me to this game. No sir, that honor belongs to the cover art. I mean, Jesus, look at that, it looks amazing. Just a boy holding a bone, with his faithful dog struggling against fate, taking the form of a giant bug thing. I don't care. It made me want to play the game, and I'm glad I did. The game follows the adventures of a boy and his canine companion after they screw around with a giant plot device and get sucked into a separate dimension, where they travel across worlds created by the minds of others. Don't look at me for clarity. This was the 90s, damn it. In terms of the story, Evermore doesn't offer much. Even the main character feels like a joke himself as a B-movie fanatic. The plot is basically an excuse for the buried gameplay, which may sound like a terrible thing for an RPG, but the journey is just so fun that it doesn't really matter in the end. You go through primitive forests, ancient Rome, and even the moon. There's great variety in the places you visit, as the graphics are crisp, interesting, and the best part is that nothing really gets stale because the game is a little bit on the shorter side. It doesn't want to waste your time. If you don't already know, or you've been watching pornography while listening to my video, in which case I would say, damn, I must be doing a better job than I thought on these videos. But, but that's not the point. This is a sister game to Secret of Mana released a few years earlier, in that both games share the same engine, menu, battle system, etc. However, I do have to say that I think the gameplay in Evermore was a bit more polished in terms of hit detection and some other things. The actual gameplay in Evermore is running across these worlds, progressing further, and accomplishing tasks in an action RPG with a neat alchemy system. The combat in Evermore is fast paced and interesting for the Super Nintendo, and with the ability to get a bunch of weapons, charge all those different weapons, and use alchemy, aka magic, the game still holds out today. The variety of enemies you fight, both big and small, are fun to face off against, and even though it's just you and a computer controlled dog, the AI was pretty smart as it never got caught behind objects the way your dumbass partners did in Secret of Mana. Overall, I was satisfied with the gameplay, and aside from the lack of multiplayer, I only have a few issues with it. I thought the game was a little too difficult at times, forcing me to grind in some areas, but it may just be because I suck. There were also a lot of boring mazes to navigate, and finding out what to do next or where to go was just a chore sometimes. Also, I didn't really like the alchemy system in that you had to keep on looking for all these different ingredients to keep track of. I do respect it for being different, but it was a pain in the ass to keep track of everything. And you know what, the same goes for the currency exchange between worlds. Other than those few nitpicky gripes, the gameplay is solid and great for 1995. However, even though the RPG elements of Evermore are fantastic, where the game really stands out is in its presentation. The graphics are fantastic as they hold out against contemporaries like Chrono Trigger. The worlds you explore are all vivid and beautiful. And what I really enjoyed was how this game tried to stay away from traditional RPG elements like knights, elves, and goblins by making these worlds something fresh and memorable. However, no great RPG would be complete without a fantastic soundtrack. And man, does Evermore deliver. I've heard people describe this soundtrack as unmemorable, 
but I think that's slightly incorrect. Yes, if you played a dozen tracks for me right now, I would only be able to get a few song titles correct. But the strength in this soundtrack is how its atmospheric tone paints a picture of the setting in your mind. The soundtrack greatly amplifies the graphics of the game, making the world of Evermore even darker, moodier, and less friendly than Secret of Mana. And this is what makes Secret of Evermore something truly memorable. It's definitely one of my favorite video game soundtracks of all time, and my pick for one of the most underrated ones. In conclusion, I enjoyed Secret of Evermore, probably even more than I did Secret of Mana, which I know many people may not agree with, but I would argue Secret of Evermore is better, even though Mana is still a great game. Secret of Evermore isn't a groundbreaking RPG, it's one of those games that will probably never be anyone's favorite, but for anyone who actually has played this game to the end, they'll remember the experience of this game, because it really it just sticks with you. I urge any fans of action RPGs to hunt this one down, especially if you like Secret of Mana. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all next time.